Okay, we're going to look at the game Hellenes, designed by Craig Besink and produced by GMT Games in 2009. Now, Hellenes covers the campaigns of the Peloponnesian War, and other companies have produced games on this war, and the Peloponnesian War is a complex one to really understand. It covered nearly 30 years, and there was a period of peace in between, the Peace of Nicaea. So what Craig has done is he's divided the game into various campaigns. So the game does not cover the entire war as one game. It's broken up into scenarios, and I think that was a good idea. Because the openings of the Peloponnesian War, the midsection and the end, were quite different. Um, they each had their own characteristics. So what he's done is divided it into four scenarios. You've got the Sicily campaign, you've got the 413 campaign, the opening, the 431 campaign, and the 415 campaign. And um, these are the setup cards for those campaigns. Um, quite nicely done by GMT. We've come to expect great graphics from GMT and uh, this game does not disappoint. So we're going to take a look at the uh, pieces, the board, uh, the cards. I'll give you a little idea of how the game plays and why I like it. It is a block game, but it is quite different than some of the block games, say from Colombia, that usually um, featured point-to-point -point movement. This is an area movement game and is quite sophisticated. I wouldn't put this uh, in the same league as a standard uh, block game. So let's take a look at the uh, pieces and components. Now the Peloponnesian War concerns the war between the city-state of Sparta, located here, and the city-state of Athens, located here. And of course, each side had their allies. The Sparta had the Peloponnesian League, which is many of these city-states on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, and the Athenians had what was the beginnings of an empire. They were primarily a naval power, and so they have scattered allies throughout the Aegean Sea. So it's the Athenian League versus the Spartan League. Now one odd thing about this war is that Sparta is primarily a land power. These are the red blocks and Athens is primarily a naval power. Now Athens has a few more blocks on here that I'm showing because we're using these charts here to show uh, the stacking. For example, Group A here is located at Athens and so you can substitute on this card the units when the stacking becomes a bit problematical. I find that a lot of block games have this problem. There just isn't enough room to put some of these larger blocks. So Corinth, for example, here has six blocks. And, as with most of the uh, block games, the strength of the enemy is unknown to you. So we're looking at it from the Spartan point of view, so we can see the Spartan units. Of course, we cannot see the Athenian units. But I will make a comment here on the uh, unit counters in Hellenes. Okay, the early block games were quite simple in the sense that a unit could either be a strength of four or you could turn it sideways and it would be a strength of three, strength of two, or a strength of one. But in this new generation of block games, uh, Hellenes goes far beyond that. And um, what they've done is there are four different strengths, four, three, two, one, but they've also qualified the combat strength with these numbers here. Here's a C2 unit. So, for example, in combat, this particular unit would roll four dice and would hit on a one or a two, and it's a C-class unit. So, if it got into battle with, let's say, um, I'll pull an Athenian unit here, an A-class unit, okay, this Athenian unit would only roll two dice, and it would only hit on a one but it would fire before the C unit. So there was a whole gradation of quality, A, B, C, and even D. For example, there's a naval unit. So if it got into combat, it would roll two dice, hitting only in a one, and in this example, it would fire last, because it's a D-class unit. 
So Helene's, um, with its complexity of units and unit types, um, has raised the bar a bit on block games. So no longer was it just a four fighting, for example, a four, or a four fighting a one. You now have the class to consider and the ability to hit. So the game is more complex in its combat than some of the earlier block games. Now one interesting thing about the Peloponnesian War is we have the awkward situation of a great land power, Sparta, versus a great naval power, Athens. Almost like an elephant trying to fight a whale. How do you get at each other? Now those of you who have read a bit about the war know that in 431 the Spartans were quite content of ravaging the area around Athens. And Athens didn't contest that. Being a naval power, there wasn't a heck of a lot they could do. And under the leadership of Pericles, their leader here, he advised against meeting the um, Spartans in open battle. Now in the 431 scenario, Athens has Pericles as a leader and the Spartans have Archidamus as their leader. And uh, we'll get into the cards in a few moments. I'll show you what they're all about. Now the sequence of play for Hellenes is quite detailed. Very detailed indeed. And you must follow it in strict sequence in order to understand the game. Now fortunately GMT has given us some great player aids as they always do. So we have this great uh, Campaigns of the Peloponnesian War help card here. I'll go through the sequence of play very quickly uh, just to give you an idea of what this game is all about. So you begin with the new year where each side will con uh, collect tribute for the cities they own. Then you'll do a victory check. Perhaps one side has won the game. Not too likely. Then you have this year-end phase where you're going to remove markers from the year before. Events, things like that. Then you're going to deal six cards to each player in this common deck of cards, and we'll get to those very soon. Then you're going to have these initiative phases, where one player will play a card, and the phases will go back and forth, as most card games do. That's the action phase. And when those cards are expended, you'll be into a winter phase. Of course, movement and combat will all be in these action phases. Then during winter, you're going to have all kinds of winter actions. You're going to have to um, quarter your men. If your men are over-quartered in certain towns, they'll suffer penalties. You'll be able to disperse your men to um, alleviate the winter conditions. Barbarian units will go home, um, and some units will be disbanded. There's also a siege phase, because up here at Potidea, we have siege going on with the... Um, Athenian units here besieging the Spartan units at Potidea. So there's a special phase for that. So there's lots going on in this game. Lots. And uh, you've all got you've got all kinds of tables. Siege attrition here. Ship damage when you move by water. Uh, ship damage when they move through deep sea areas. Force marching. And you've all got um, special rules for the Peace of Nicaea. So there's lots going on in this game. You get a rule book, of course, with the game. It's only 15 pages long, but it's extremely, extremely detailed. Now, this is a copy. I always like to work from copies when I'm learning the game because I like to yellow in and highlight and stuff like that. So, um, don't be fooled by the length of the rule book. Yes, it is only 15, 16 pages, but boy, it's detailed. Now, fortunately, it's also well illustrated. So you've got very good illustrations um, on how to play the game. And there is a playbook, which gives a detailed example of play. So um, this isn't your ordinary block game by no means. It's more complex than other block games I've seen. It's certainly more complex than the Columbia series of block games. This is closer to a historical simulation rather than strict block game, especially with the area movement rather than the point-to-point -point movement. Let's take a look at those cards. Okay, well there's a mine of information on these cards. They've been very well designed indeed. Uh, they're very practical 
And one thing I can see that the designer has gone to a lot of trouble to do is to put on many of the cards a map, a small map of the board game right on the card. And this is very, very handy when you have to read something. For example, here it'll say uh, Sparta places a garrison in Samos or Rhodes. Well, the average person may not know where Samos and Rhodes is, so you're going to burn up all kinds of time trying to find them on the map. Well, nope, the designer has um, helped you in that. He's actually shown right on the card where these places are. You can see they're in dark red. So a lot of thought has got into these cards. So you're not reading and trying to look all over the map where stuff is. You read the card and you can find the stuff very fast. Very well designed indeed. Now red events here with the red band generally are uh, events favorable to Sparta and events in green are favorable to uh, Athens. Now another thing uh, on the card is kind of neat to give it period feel. Many games uh, have a number on the upper left usually a one, two, or three, indicating the value of the card. This is the same thing, except they've given it more period feel. So the cards themselves have these little coins on the bottom. So that's a two value card. And for example, there's a three value card, three coins. Another pro-Spartan event. Another pro-Spartan event, Ionian Revolt. And there, there's a leader card, Probolus, leading Athens. Um, there's a lot of cards and uh, a lot of history in these. Plague Strikes Athens, one value card. And um, the meat of the game is in these cards. Uh, Helot Uprising, which is something that Sparta was always afraid of. Um, Alcibiades Ostracized. Well, Greeks were always very hard on their leaders and this is a card that uh, shows that. Here's another one about all CBDs. Uh, Civil War, three value card. So I won't go through all the cards, but you can see that um, a lot of history in here. A lot of work has gone into designing these cards, and I think they are very well done indeed. The combat is pretty straightforward. Like most block games and area games and point-to-point -point movie games, combat occurs when you have units of opposing sides on the same space. So in this case, we'll give an example of a Spartan naval raid, let's say, on Naxos. Well, the units would be revealed. So we would put the units down, showing you their strengths, like this. Now for the purposes of the video, so we can see them right side up, I'm going to put them right side up so we can see them. So, in this case, we've got four Spartan units engaging three Athenian units. And you may remember me telling you that the class of the unit determines who fires first. So in this case, we've got an A-class unit, which is above all the classes of these units. So this A-class unit will fire first. So it's going to roll three dice, and it will hit on a one, two, or three. Let's see what happens here. Okay, the Athenians rolled and got very lucky indeed. They rolled three threes, which indicates three hits have to be inflicted on the Spartans. And you generally put those hits on your largest unit first. So we'll take a hit on this one, take a second hit on this one, and take a hit off this one. So the Athenians are off to a very good start. Now that A unit has fired. So now the B units would fire. And in this case, it happens to be an Athenian unit again. He would roll two dice. He'd only hit on a one. So we'll roll the two dice. And they've rolled two threes. So no hits. Okay, so next would it be engaging the C-class units, and when you have C-class units of both sides, in this case we've got a Spartan C and an Athenian C, the defender fires first. So the defender, again, will fire three uh, dice, hitting only on a one. And in this case they get another hit. So the Spartans are having a rough time here. So we'll tilt 
that one. Now, finally, all the Athenians have fired, and uh, no Spartan units have fired. So what's going to happen now is the Spartans fire. They will roll two dice, and they hit only on a one or two. Two dice, and they get a hit on the Athenian unit. So it must be the largest unit, so we'll take it off this uh, unit here. And all of the naval units hit only on a one. They're all D1 units, and since they're all, might as well combine them, they'll be rolling four dice. Four dice, and they only hit on a one. Roll and no hits. So that's a typical round of combat. And of course, depending on casualties and the desires of the defender and attackers, the attacker uh, may retreat. I'm suspecting that in this battle, Sparta will probably lose and retreat from Naxos, leaving the Athenians in charge. So that's how a typical combat works um, in Hellenes. Okay, the designer has come up with a neat mechanism for the turn-to-turn uh, -turn mechanics. Now, each player will have six cards in his hand, but when it comes time to do the action phase, each player will select one card from his hand and put it face down in front of him. So in this case, we'll say the Athenians here on the right play this card, and the Spartans here on the left this card. You then reveal the cards. Oh, this isn't a good example. I've got a leader card there. Take another one. Leader cards are different. We'll say the Athenians played this card here. And what matters here is the value of the card. You can see that the Athenians have a three-value card and the Spartans have a two-value card. Well, in the game, the lower card plays first. So in this case, Sparta would play first. Also, they have a rule whereby events take place over actions. So in this case, if both sides were going to play for actions, Sparta would go first. But if one player plays a card for an event, for example, let's say... The Athenian player had played the Helot Uprising. The Helot Uprising has precedence. This occurs first before the um, Spartan player takes his move. So you've got some great interaction from turn to turn between the two players. You don't know who's going to go first. Events do trump actions. So there's a lot of interaction in this game. Now I know in this short video I haven't given this game its real due. It's very difficult to describe the way a game plays because each scenario is so different. But I can say that the dynamics of Athens being a naval power and Sparta being a land power um, really makes this game interesting. It's, it's just different than other block games. You're going to see a lot of sieges in this game, that's for sure. Um, they're kind of cool. You just don't know how long a siege is going to last. It could drag out. You might take the city right away. Um, there's a lot of treachery in this game. The Peloponnesian War is a very complex war. And city-states are continually changing sides. Um, the naval element alone is quite interesting. Because once Sparta builds a navy too, she can uh, contest Athens at sea. And as we now know, Sparta... Uh, eventually did prevail in this war. So I know I haven't been um, really fair to this game. There's just way more to this game that I can possibly show in a short video. I just felt that Hellenes deserved its own video to uh, show it off. And uh, if you have any interest in the Peloponnesian War, this might be the game to get. Um, I have tried Athens and Sparta by Columbia Games. I haven't tried the Clash of Arms one on the Peloponnesian War. Like I said, this, this subject has been done before. But, I don't know, I, I find, my gut feeling is that this one is the, um, the playable, historical Peloponnesian War game. I think it's the best one out there on the subject. Uh, but I do have to qualify that. Like I said, I have not played the Clash of Arms one, but it's getting kind of a lot of negative um, feedback on Board Game Geek and ConSim, it just wasn't a hit. Uh, I think um, Hellenes here is the Peloponnesian War game to get. Anyway, that's it. I hope uh, that has given you some idea of what this game is all about. Thanks for watching.